Hi all, let's look at another fascinating match of Leela against Stockfish. This is in TSEC Season 14, a bonus match. So this is 100 games, but with the time control much faster, 12 minutes with a three second increment per move. And the key thing is the engines choose their own openings. So very, very interesting uh, differences to the main uh, TSEC Super Final match. So let's see, Leela playing white plays e4. So this is still the ID 32930, which played in, in the super final. Stockfish, the version as of the 19th of February. Uh, so here we see um, the Sicilian defense and an open Sicilian and the Nine Dwarf. So this is perfectly respectable start position. Leela plays bishop e3 and we have e5 and we have actually seen Leela doing quite well against this structure because of the d5 weakness. Sometimes uh, Leela can sometimes get rid of the opponent's counterplay. Uh, there's been many examples of that. Knight b3, bishop e7, we see h3. This was a favourite of Bobby Fischer and was revitalised in more recent years by Vichy Anand. So h3's uh, had a somewhat of a resurgence in popularity. h6, it seems, according to chess base live book, bishop e6 is more common. For example, queen f3, uh, this kind of position has even prospects, it seems, statistically at least. So h6, interesting. g4, at least h6 means g5 is not necessarily kicking the knight away. Knight bd7, a4, clamping down against b5. So quite a positional treatment here from Leela on the light squares. Knight f8. Now Stockfish, instead of routinely casting, seems to want to probe the dark squares in white's position. Queen d2, bishop e6, white castles, queen side. Now that looks a little bit odd with maybe the pawn on a4. You might think this is a bit risky because it isn't it asking for a dynamic b5 at some point. Rook c8, king b1. Uh, bishop g2, there's no point in bishop a move like bishop g2 here. You might think that influences d5, but the bishop's going to be a target sometimes uh, to knight h4. But also in this particular position, uh, say bishop f3, yeah, because knight h4 is now a problem for bishop e2, say b5. Very energetic, black could end up getting a big initiative and an advantage. Uh, so, maybe not entirely wise to play bishop g2 in the light of this potential knight maneuver. Uh, so, we see knight g6, and now knight d5. And you might think, doesn't this have a certain weakness of the last move? It's neglected e4. It does look into the b6 square. It looks as though that's trouble if that's allowed something to do with b6. Uh, if white had played f3 as an alternative supporting e4, this kind of position, white should be okay, uh, but not bishop g2, that's just running into knight h4 as mentioned. Uh, so anyway, so this is seems to be a dynamic pawn sack. It wasn't actually accepted, bishop takes d5 was played. If knight takes e4 is played, queen b4, curiously, it's a double attack, and it ends up, it seems as though black could be in trouble after bishop takes, for example, rook takes, the knight goes back, queen takes b7, offering an exchange sack. This is interesting because it's dismantling black's pawn chain over here, a6 being vulnerable. There's actually plenty of compensation uh, for being the exchange down here, especially after taking this pawn. It seems as though white could be in a massive driving seat. For example, this situation where white is getting a huge advantage potentially with this advanced pawn and the light squared grip is amazing. The knight's kind of not that great. Uh, yeah, very, very interesting idea behind the scenes here on knight takes e4 this queen before if this really is the case. It seems to be on my analysis. But it was just ignored. So bishop takes d5 instead. Now this gives white potential for a strategic plan of c4, c5 later. That seems to be the thematic kind of plan. C4 is played here. And now Queen A5 offering exchange of Queens. 
With white having this space advantage on the queen side, it seems unwise to swap off the queens. Queen d7 was played. On takes this hits immediately b7, of course. Say the knight retreats back. It looks as though c5 is going to be played at some point. Uh, so white stands better with with prospects to, to time things like c5. Not at the moment, d5 is weak, but it looks generally as though white's better with a small edge. So it was ignored, queen d7, queen b4, queen c7, bishop b6, queen b8. So a5, this locks down that queen side, knight d7, bishop d3. We have knight takes b6, a takes. So is this slightly controversial to give up that uh, knight for the bishop and you know for, for both sides should white really be giving up the dark square bishop it's interesting this pawn mass looks a little bit scarier though but at the moment because of the dark square bishop it seems as though c5 is not really on the cards necessarily and however <laughs> stockfish plays bishop h4 this seems a little bit of an irrelevancy not against the c5 break this pawn is moved, knight f4, bishop f5 hitting the rook, the rook moves, and now a really nifty move, rook h2. So the rook can join the other one potentially on d2 or go to c2 to support c5. g6, the bishop drops back, bishop, king g7. On f5, this leaves potential weaknesses around the king. This scenario should be quite nice for white, especially with the prospects of a knight e6 where the rooks doubled like this. This is really quite uh, a nice coordination for white having a big advantage here. If we look at this again, if if that wasn't taken, let's say the bishop went back knight e6. Yeah, once white gets this kind of scenario, this is pretty nice for white. White's going to have a big advantage. So uh, we have king g7, knight a5, rook d7, bishop c2. Uh, we have the rook going back, queen c3, and this does prepare formatically b4, c5, looking at e5 as well. The king's not in the right place here, it seems, with the queen on c3. Rook h8, b4, h5. We have now bishop e4 supporting d5, because if c5, maybe that d5 is vulnerable. So supporting the d5 pawn for c5 now. But bishop g3, this cheekily wins a pawn. Leela just accepts this as a pawn sack. Knight takes h3. So the pawn sack to try and get in c5 more effectively. g takes, rook takes. If g takes h5 here, f4 tactically, and these pieces are loose. So for example, that's very good for white winning two pieces for a rook there. Very good for white. Uh, so we have rook takes h5, which holds the knight at least. So c5 now, though, this is the pawn sacrifice for the strategic break. And is the idea to undermine the pawn chain or just connect up pawns over here? It seems c6 is very, very scary looking. Knight g5, and it's c6 that's played. b takes. And now b7, great move. On knight takes c6, this, although it seems plausible, black can just sack the exchange and white's lost the excitement of the connected pass pawns. It's all gone. Uh, black would actually be much better there. So that's a way of losing all the excitement of the possession. Uh, d takes is actually reasonable, it seems. This is a reasonable alternative with still white having an advantage. But this seems to be the strongest, b7. Bishop f4, rook c2. So Lila's really crashed through on the queen side here, offering this pawn earlier. Knight takes e4. On c takes d5, bishop takes. White maintains a strong grip on the position. Uh, for example, like this, where knight b3 uh, is very, very handy here. Uh, for example, if black tries to generate some play, yeah, this is just heading for a big advantage. If knight b3 isn't played, by the way, you might think, well, why knight b3? If rook c8 immediately, there's a check and that drags the rook back. It's just too much uh, play here. 
uh, a1's neglected so you know this this gets dangerous so if the rook has to go back the queen's going there but white has to, has to then play knight b3 anyway to proceed and can end up with a big advantage technically like this for example not losing the queen but rather not losing the queen on b8 but just material advantage here so uh, knight takes e4 was played not c takes d5 f takes c takes and now knight c6 cashes out a bit so winning the winning a whole rook not just the exchange that <laughs> winning a whole rook big difference uh, so a whole rook up but black has a lot of pawns let's see this mop up job how easy or difficult it is so the queens come off this pawn drops the b pawns also dangerous this pawn stopped in its tracks there and now d6 drops and yeah blacks losing the pawns is just clearly doesn't look good to be a rook down uh, so the end is nigh here uh, with f7 dropping and uh, carries on a bit and yep carries on up to this point where both engines thought was absolutely massive advantage for white so yes despite the uh much quicker time limit this this game seems to be really quite interesting and the big change for me and for a lot of people crying out about the t-sex super final is let the computers choose their own books uh but it seems uh leela has done magnificently well in this particular bonus match uh would it be the same with a longer time control that's another experiment maybe for another time for t set bonus matches but yeah this is one of many uh beautiful games from that match uh where leela <laughs> absolutely crushed stockfish basically on the overall score i didn't really want to remove the tension but yes stockfish uh, was obliterated in this particular match this is just one of many obliterations and given time i want to go over the other ones as well okay so if you enjoyed this game video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net play against other youtubers you can also test yourself on the variations covered in this and other games from the improved menu puzzle books option which uh, has also a link to the annotated game uh, and i may do a, f a few from the puzzle book as an addendum here to this video okay uh comments questions donations see the description Li like shares subscribes with the notification bell really appreciate it thanks very much this is the puzzle book for this game video this is on chesspold improved puzzle books you'll see it listed there with the youtube icon soon uh so I've chosen uh, a brutal fil filter clear or mates one to five only here black to play yeah black pounces on knight h4 here got that one <laughs> all right white to play for a clear advantage the thing is that pin in this variation knight takes c5 we've got that pin got that one nice i'm um, keeping these dead easy so uh black to play for a clear advantage i think just takes here and just offers the exchange but yeah if you want to step up the difficulty change the moves and change these and yeah it becomes difficult after so um check that out uh at chess world uh okay hope you enjoyed this video thanks very much